Welcome to Pimpy's Investment Chat, where we keep investment talk simple. And here's your host, Pimpy. What is going on out there, peeps? All right, this video was sent to me by a couple of people. They wanted me to respond to their video. These are other content creators sharing information based on their own beliefs. Now, I did have a chance to hear part of their video. And I can say, obviously, some of the stuff that they're talking about, I don't agree with. The other parts of it, I do agree with. That's normally what happens. But I do want to straighten something out because I don't want people to misunderstand what I'm saying. When I talk about other content creators, I'm complaining about what they're saying. I don't hate anybody. I told you guys you should do your own research because damn near everybody out there that's creating content has been busted at one time or another for fraud or worse. I don't hate any of the content creators out there. I just don't agree with the route that they're taking when they're sharing information with the public, okay? So let's get into this particular video. I agree with some of the stuff they said, but they're not saying anything different that we don't hear a million times, okay? Before we get started, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button. If you're not a subscriber, please do so, because when you do, it helps out the channel, and I certainly do appreciate it. If you're thinking about buying gold and silver, head on over to our friends at Miles Franklin. The link will be down below in the description. When you make your purchase, make sure you use promo code PIMPY, P-I-M-P-Y, and they'll take care of you. If you have any additional questions, you can reach us over here at this phone number or over here at this particular email. For all orders over $10,000, reach out by email and we'll make sure that you get a great deal. So come on over to Miles Franklin and add to your precious metal inventory. All right, so let's get into the video in just a little bit and respond to some of the things they were saying because it's not anything that I haven't already spoke about before, but it gives me a chance to clear some things up. All right, so we're going to go straight into it. So the last time we spoke, it was before Christmas on camera. And there was a lot of build up to the RV It's meant to be happening. Um, there was a lot of things going around saying it was going to happen around Christmas, first uh, week of January in the new year, some point in January. So I am seeing a lot of emails and comments of um, a lot of our audience asking, where is it at at the moment? So what, what, where is it looking like it's going to go? Because I feel like a few people, they feel disappointed, like there was meant to happen. and. Let us know what your uh, view on this is, John. Why are you disappointed? Seriously, why? Every year we go through the same thing. This is what we hear. It's going to RV when a new budget comes out. Because there's no way that a budget could do all these projects with the current exchange rate. We hear that. Or it's the end of the year. So by the beginning of next year, they're going to go ahead and change the exchange rate. Or some good news pops up. And because of that good news, they're going to change the exchange rate. It happens all the time, you guys. Sure. Well, <clears throat> no, it's a fair question. I'm going to answer in two parts. Firstly, as I've said before, and, and I know you're aware, and I'm sure most of the audience is aware, this is God's timing. It's his blessing. It, it, it's never, God is never late and he's never early. He doesn't work on our timetables. And that's good because we would mess it up. Yes, I agree with what he's saying. It's God's timing. I get that. But I can tell already that these content creators have already figured out bringing God into your content, you're going to capture an audience of religious people that are going to believe you. And so what they'll do in their content is keep talking about how God's going to make this happen and it's on God's time and this is going to be a blessing from God. But everybody knows how I feel about this. Look, if people are sincere, I support that. I do. If you're using it just so you can appeal to your listeners, I think that's bullshit. But it will happen when he wants it and needs it to happen. And as Kim Clement said, when things seem at their worst, I will free my people. Now to specifics on the breakdown of your question, as I told you in the audience and Nick on <clears throat> the shows we do with him monthly, I had said pretty consistently by January 1st, everything's gonna change. Some people ran with that. A lot of people have selective hearing they hear what they want to hear or what tickles their ears or whatever the case may be nobody knows that better than me this is the thing that makes me laugh you'll see comments where people will post something like pimpy said the exchange rate is going to be 12 to 1 and it didn't happen that's not what i said and then later on in the comments they go that's why i stopped listening to pimpy's videos a long time ago i was like part way through this one and then i turned it off i'm like well then you didn't hear the whole video that's why you don't have all the information that's why you drew your wrong conclusions, and that's why you're wrong about your information. 
what I was saying is by January 1st, we're going to see a lot of changes happen. I didn't say by January 1st, it was all said and done. I wouldn't do that. We don't do dates and rates here. Look, content creators have gotten really wise on how they can mislead their listeners. They'll imply, without saying it directly, they'll imply that the RV is going to happen at the beginning of the next year. And then when it doesn't happen, you hear, well, that's not what I said. You guys drew that conclusion. I'm just saying there's going to be some big changes. It's like content creators within the Dinar community claiming that something's going to happen on the 15th, something's going to happen on the 17th, and then they didn't happen. And what do they say? Oh, the three-letter agencies. Oh, the can got kicked down a road. <laughs> Same crap all the time. We're looking at timelines. That being said, I think we can agree that um, there's been a huge uptick of activity in the world since January 1st of the new year. We had the uh, earthquakes that have happened in Japan, here in California, Indonesia. We have all kinds of resignations that are happening that we put on our Telegram channel daily that people can see the copious amount of information. Um, I just did, as you know, a weekly wrap up, which we're gonna be sharing with the audience shortly after this interview. And, <laughs> excuse me, and uh, cough reminding it's still lingering. And uh, what's going on right now is that we have the Jordanian and Pakistani military has started to do attacks on Iran. Mm -hmm. And uh, Saudi Arabia has just welcomed in Iraq to the WTO, the World Trade Organization. But to do that, they have to be on a reinstated rate, not a program rate, which people remember I've talked about is a suppressed controlled rate, like the rest of the world is doing with their currencies up to this point, which is about to change. First of all, Saudi Arabia agreed to work with Iraq to help their ascension into the World Trade Organization. So I will talk about that later on because in a recent article, it said that they're going to help Iraq ascend through the World Trade Organization as quickly as possible. The other thing he said is they can't go in on a program rate. Nowhere in the process, nowhere in the rules, nowhere in the procedures does it say that Iraq cannot go in with a program rate. That's false. But idealistically, according to the World Trade Organization, you want to make sure that the currencies are as close as possible for currency pairing when it comes to trade. So although it's not mandatory, it would be good for Iraq if this happened. I just want to make sure that people understand that you don't have to change your exchange rate in order to be in a World Trade Organization. Vietnam is in the World Trade Organization and they have a crappy currency. So just be careful with the wording that people are using. It's not mandatory for you to change your exchange rate. They can go in with the program rate. We need to remember something, Chris, that's very important. I think people should write this down. Here in America, and I'm sure in Europe, as you know, in England, <clears throat> there's a difference between the calendar year and the fiscal year. So for an example, October 1st, the economists know is the new physical year starts, right? In England and America, to copy each other. Just because the calendar says October, people think that's the fourth quarter of the year. If that's the fourth quarter of the calendar year, that's not the quarter of the financial year. So yeah. Iraq operates the same way. Their fiscal year starts April 1st. So when they said they're coming to the end of the year, they're talking about March, 2023 ends and segues into April 1st. So what they're yeah. telling you is the back wall is April 1st. It can happen anywhere between now and then. I can tell you over the years, I've heard so many rumors about what Iraq's physical financial year is. This guy's saying it's at the end of March begin and starts in April. I've heard that and I spoke about that before myself. It used to be that way. And then they changed it to the calendar year. That was going to be the physical. But you don't have to guess. You don't have to wonder what the real fiscal year is. All you have to do is go to the World Bank and they tell you. Welcome to the World Bank. Just look up the profile for Iraq. The fiscal year begins on July 1st of the previous year and runs through June 30th of the designated year. That is their physical year. So basically, it looks like this. Starts July 1st, ends June 31st. So like I said, I've heard many rumors about this myself. But why guess? You don't have to guess. Just go to the World Bank, the IMF. They will tell you what each country's fiscal year is when it comes to their budget.
what are we at the end of January, February? We'll say 60 plus day window, conservatively speaking, as a timeline. Mm -hmm. Now we look last year, they did a small revalue, which proves that they can do it without having to be in the WTO or passing any of the oil and gas laws. They could do whatever they want. They yeah. haven't done it yet because of corruption hasn't been ferreted out to its worst point. Now that we're seeing Iran getting involved, we're waiting for Iraq, excuse me, uh, for Israel to make their grave mistake and bomb the secret nuclear power plants. That can happen anytime between now and at the end of the first quarter. So cautiously, I would say to people, that's where we are. <laughs> Did this guy just say he knew that there's a timeline for one country to bomb another? I mean, I heard that, right? We're waiting for Israel to bomb Iran. They have to do it within a specific timeline in order for us to move forward. So either this guy is Mossad and he knows the plans for Israel in the future. Come on, people. Seriously? As far as corruption is concerned, I agree. And I've spoken about this several times in my video. And you guys know how I feel about it. You guys know how much it affects what's going on with Iraq. But to say that we're waiting for Israel to bomb Iran and it has to happen by this deadline, that's a little crazy. And based on that information, I would say that it can happen between anywhere between now and April 1st. We should be looking at as the events uptick in the Middle East, people's eyes will be off Iraq. When that happens, it will happen because things will be at their worst. So yeah. that's where we are. And I would say that we're in a first quarter window for things to precipitate. Okay, cool. Great answer. So um, you, we do keep mentioning Iraq when it comes to um, the RV and mm -hmm. the Middle East. And so what about the rest mm -hmm. of the countries um, like Vietnam <laughs> When do they come? Do they come after Iraq happens, or is it all going to happen simultaneously? What's what's your opinion on this? Because it won't be it won't be simultaneous. Because as I said on our show this week, yeah. with up front the prophetic, two reasons. One, that would be insider trading, and that would be illegal. Not that these yeah. guys are unethical, but I'm just saying by yeah. financial law, they yeah. they can't do that. There's penalties for that. No, there's not penalties for changing your exchange rate. There's penalties for people to claim that they got an insider telling them what is going to happen. That is a penalty. Now, the only way you're going to see where all currencies end up on an even playing field, and I did believe that when there's a global currency reset, you would see all of them end up the same exchange rate. Is that possible? Of course, that anything is possible. But likely what's going to happen is the only way you're going to see all of the currencies start off equally is if they go to a global digital payment system like the central bank digital currency that kind of makes sense then i do have a lot of information on that and i will share with you later on in the video god knows and understands that not everybody is in the same place in this movement some people have been like me and, and you in the dinar for many years some people are new to it some people maybe have been in it for a couple of years everybody's at a different place like puberty <laughs> so god understands wholly that there are some people who are going to miss the dinar, who are going to miss the zin, who are going to miss the dong. And so you have 209 countries and provinces to, as a totality of the world. That's why this wealth transfer is in waves, because yeah. everybody will catch it at a different time. As a segue to your question, <clears throat> so it won't all, all go at once. Secondly, to your question, what's next? Vietnam right now, Taiwan just held their, their elections um on the 13th unfortunately the can the candidate we were hoping for that was an independent peaceful candidate was illegally snubbed not unlike the rest of the world uh but that's to highlight corruption because this is the year of shock and awe this is the year of vindication this is the year of the we from the tears all the things that people said would never happen will start happening front and center i just did a video about vietnam they have busted hundreds of people that are part of the regulatory process as well as politicians for corruption in Vietnam. So is what he's saying, can that possibly happen? Is that worldwide people are waking up that the government is corrupt? Yeah, you can see that playing out right now. So I do agree with that. But as far as a currency reset, uh, I preached about it a long time ago. And I do believe we're going to come across some type of currency reset. But it has more to do with the revaluation of gold than anything else. Um, Vietnam is quietly preparing to to reinstate, as I said the other day on the show, Iraq and Vietnam have been here before. It's just been quite a while. 
So they're reinstating where other countries are revaluing who've never been here. Mm -hmm. Vietnam is in a situation waiting for China-Taiwan conflict. I think what you're going to see is the continuation of Iraq. While that happens, what will be brought to a boil is precipitating the China-Taiwan conflict, which should be short-lived and is scripted like everything else. That will be enough to free Vietnam enough out of communism to break free, because Vietnam doesn't have a financial issue like Iraq. They have a corruption issue, not unlike many other countries throughout the world. So I think we'll see Vietnam fall shortly after Iraq, and then I think we'll see Indonesia and Zimbabwe, what we're waiting for is Nelson Chamisa to be reappointed as president, which, as I said on Mahoney's show last week, he's shown concrete proof that they are, in fact, what we've said before, the breadbasket to the world. And they're fully prepared to come back on a gold standard for the Zim bonds, for the Zim dollars, for the agro checks. So if you watched my videos yesterday from the Zim dollars, the bond notes had a time limit, they're expired. The checks had a time limit, they're expired. As far as honoring them is concerned, what is he talking about? What are they going to honor? They've already been honored. They're obsolete. A new currency was created. Once that new currency was created, those other currencies are obsolete. Yes, the agro checks will be profitable. I know I don't know what the rate will be as compared to what my idea is about the Zim, but I can assure the audience that if you're holding agro checks, you'll be quite satisfied. And all of these currencies and bonds are going to go on a digital asset backed platform based on gold and silver. And we're not there yet, but we're going to get there. It'll be a simultaneous thing along with the cryptos, which we'll touch on in a moment. Okay, countries going on a digital currency is not a good thing. Not at all. I don't care if they go, oh, it's going to be gold backed or whatever. It's still a fiat dollar. What's the difference between the fiat dollar and a digital dollar if the government says it's backed by gold? It's just words. We know we have not been able to audit our gold holdings in the United States since the 70s. What's to keep a government from just saying, oh, it is backed by gold, and then finding out later on that it's not? What's better is for you to own physical gold and silver so that you're out of the system. Cryptocurrencies are such a trap. But anyways, I got a lot of information about that, and I will go over it later on. But you don't want to do anything digital whatsoever. They are setting people up all around the world and I'll show you proof later on. Own the gold and silver yourself. I think people should be looking at the structure of this more than worrying about dates and rates because if the foundation is there, which it will be, people will be more than satisfied with what the rate's going to be. That and yeah. trust God for the process. But that's the currencies that I see them laying out at present day. But just because they do that, that doesn't change what's going on with your physical notes. What do you think? These people are stupid? The first thing they're going to do is find a way to either make all banknotes obsolete unless you turn them in. And when you turn them in, they're going to be done at the current exchange rate, whether it's good or bad. So just keep in mind, whatever happens to your paper notes is not the same thing that's going to happen to your digital currency. So you don't want to support a digital currency. All right. As you can tell, they are a channel who's covering all the different subjects. I used to do the same thing. I did. But my approach, as usual, was different than other people. I just didn't go out there and regurgitate the same bullshit that you hear. I went out there to research and find out the truth about all the information that was being shared. Back then, it pissed a lot of people off, <laughs> just like it does today. So some of the things they're saying, I agree with. For the most part, there's a lot of the crap that they're talking about. is the same bullshit and lies that we've been hearing for a long, long time. And I've debunked it so many times, it's not even funny. Anyways, you guys, let me know what you think. I'll look forward to hearing from you. I'm out.